So a couple weeks ago, we bought this at a junkyard for $25. Now this is a Baja 200 frame. And this was basically a Manco um, American Express that they private labeled to other companies. Uh, they're the same exact thing as a uh, Dingo or an American Express. This was the Dingo one. It used to have the full row cage and I don't know yet um, if we're gonna build the row cage for it and put a weld on row cage or a bolt on row cage. Uh, I haven't decided that, but we've got a massive stack of parts from Go Power Sports. We've got a brand new set of slicks. Um, I was gonna go with a set of off-road tires on this, but these carts are really good on road, you know, and playing around in the flat yard. So figured I'd just throw some slicks back on it, new live axle. We're gonna do hydraulic disc brakes instead of that, uh, just that cable driven uh, disc brake because I don't like those too much. And I want this to be geared for a kid because I can't fit in it too well. I can fit in it, but I'm not comfortable. So we're not gonna do nothing crazy with it. Just gonna do a nice restoration on this whole thing. So uh, without further ado, we gotta get into it. There's a bunch of damage on this frame, bunch of broke pieces. So we're basically gonna cut off all the messed up uh, janky pieces off this thing and start replacing it. We're gonna strip it down the bare frame and get to fabricating some new parts for this thing and getting it back on the yard.
all right so off camera we got the axle mounted because we had to cut the axle down we didn't have a short enough one and that's always a son of a gun because you can't just uh so we got to use lock collars on the outsides like on each side of the wheel hub to keep it on well the rim won't clear that axle collar because of the uh this axle collar here you can see how those bolts stick out i mean when it's tightened down they're lower but they stick out a little bit well the rim almost clears this the center bore of the rim so you got to grind it out a little bit with a dremel and then you got to grind two notches for these to go and you need to make sure you have it lined up it's a big pain we can basically put our brakes on bleeders up we're missing one of our bleeder heads so i'm gonna have to go to the parts store and get that there we go i don't even think i filmed this either but i just took a piece of flat stock and welded drilled my holes that lined up with the uh the brake caliper and then weld it right on it's really easy mounting these calipers oh my gosh Ooh, torque you see the brake rotor is not dead true yeah. but it's okay so now we can get our keyway the rest of the way in our key Now we can put our collars on, and then we can do the same thing to the sprocket. Almost done with the pulse pump. I've ran the fuel line down beside the seat into the tank. I just need to hook up the pulse line to the pulse pump, and I normally drill the the barb in the neck of the head, right in that area, but. This uh, carburetor is kind of hard to get off because of how I've had to put a little bit of glue to keep the throttle rod from coming out. And I don't really want to pick that out. So I'm probably going to add a secondary barb to this to run to the catch can. And then um, I'm going to run this off a Go Power Sports catch can just so oil don't blow by inside of it. But we're now, we got to bleed the brakes. Now hydraulic brakes are sometimes complicated if you use like the ATV style. This is the easiest caliper to mount you can see i just took a quarter inch piece of flat stock drilled two holes in it and then just i basically tightened down the caliper on the rotor and then lined it up and welded it on it's really simple but these are more expensive they're higher quality calipers they'll last longer than your ebay variants and stuff but uh these are the ones i like to use on these carts because they're just simple and they look cool and they're really strong brakes so what i'm gonna do is i have this one closed off this bleeder valve this one open uh if you go on go power sports of course it's in the links in the video description you can buy this little bleeder bottle that comes also with this little cap so i've already filled the master cylinder with fluid so we can put this on we can push fluid we can back purge it uh through this and force fluid through that and out the line And there we go. And you can see the air bubbles. Come on. And you still want to do the old fashioned foot pump, but that got 90% of the air out. This is just a real cheap kit from Go Power Sports. It works great. And I normally, whatever fluid I don't use, I pour back into my, uh, my brake fluid. And after every use, I clean this with brake cleaner really well before I put it in a Ziploc bag to seal it up. Just to make sure I don't get any moisture because brake fluid does draw moisture. So over time it'll have water in it. We already got pretty good pressure uh, just from that. I mean, we got full pressure pretty much. Remember you can get these gas tanks from Brad Hill. He custom makes them. I think these run about a hundred bucks for this style. And it uh, works really nice on these small carts. I like them a whole lot. 